Now we're on to the last talk of this section, which is uh, by Engen Karak, oh, sorry, I'm going to mess this up, Karak Geoglu um, from HPE, and the title is Recent GPU Programming Improvements in Chapel. Sorry for messing up your name, Engen. That's totally fine. Thanks a lot okay, for the introduction, for Hermie. <laughs> you can hear me, right? Yes, and see okay, your perfect. slides. Okay, great. Um, so hello, hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Engi Karakola. I'm the GPU sub team lead in the Chapel team. And right now I'll talk about recent GPU programming improvements in the Chapel. So let's dive right in with some recap on how to program GPUs using Chapel. So there are two key concerns in parallel computing. One is parallelism and the other is locality. Uh, for locality, Chapel has this first class concept of a locale. So there's a predefined locale type and predefined locales array in Chapel applications, for example, and they represents compute nodes uh, in the simplest sense. And uh, typically a compute node and a locale has just CPU cores and memory associated with them. And if you have multiple locales, uh, then they are typically connected on a network. So with GPU's introduction, this model breaks essentially. So what we do with the GPU uh, support effort in Chapel is we introduce a new locale model in Chapel. So the default locale model is what we call flat, which is the picture that I was showing before. But with the GPU support, the cornerstone is the new GPU locale model in which GPUs are represented as sub-locales uh, within each locale. So here in this example, each locale has four GPUs. So let me focus on one of these locales and let's run a code together line by line to see how GPU programming in Chapel works. So the application starts, you declare a variable, uh, you are just using a single core on your CPU and the data that you allocate will be allocated on the host memory. And the key statement here is this on statement. So on statement essentially moves the execution and allocation to another locale. And this is not part of GP support, this is just part of Chapel uh, period. Um, so what happens here is that here is a predefined um, variable that describes the current node that you're running on. And with the GPU support, what we have is this GPUs array that just stores uh, GPU sublocales. So what this does is you are targeting the first GPU on your node. And what does that targeting entail? So any kind of dynamic allocation that happens inside the on statement will now be satisfied through, uh, through the GPU memory. And any data parallel operation here, this is a promoted array incrementation operation in Chapel. Uh, any data parallel operation such as this one will be executed on the GPU. So as more underlying, uh, so the underlying code that implements this promoted expression is a for all or for each loop. So you can explicitly write your for all or for each loop and that loop will also turn into a GPU curve. And as you exit the on statement, the memory will be cleaned on the GPU and you will be back on the CPU core. But I want to step back to this point and see how we can expand this a little bit better. Uh, Paul said something in his keynote, I believe, that about like keeping transistors busy in the system. So as you can see, there are tons of uh, empty squares here. And let's see how we can make use of them using Chapel's features. So let's focus on the other GPU. Um, the way to use two GPUs in Chapel is there is nothing specific to GPU. And you just change this simple on statement to a coforall. So coforall, if you're not familiar with it, is a loop where each iteration will run, into, run on a, a parallel task. So what happens here is that you're iterating over this GPU's array, it will yield a GPU sublocale, and then you target that GPU sublocale, and voila, you have two tasks that are running on um, two GPUs. What if you want to run on multiple locales? Just add a very similar code for all, pretty much identical actually, that iterates over a different locales array and targets different locales, but now if you, with this combination, now you can use multiple locales, multiple GPUs, however many they are. And there are still empty squares in the, in the CPU cores. How you would use them is using Kubigin statements. So Kubigin is lesser known compared to coforall, admittedly. But what it does is every statement in, Kofor, uh, in a Kubigin will execute in a separate task. So this Kubigin has two statements. One is a coforall that is in yellow shade. And the other is the anonymous block that is in blue shade. And that that uh, blue shade doesn't have any on statement, so it will just execute on the on the CPU cores. So with that simple progression and using existing Chapel features, you can use multiple locales and multiple GPUs uh, in Chapel pretty easily. So let me move on to the second part of my talk, which is about recent improvements. I will touch upon things that uh, we reported in Chip 2022, but mostly focus on the new stuff. So in 2022, we just got the fundamentals working. And if you look at the slides and talk from there, we were just talking about how did we manage to compile this and how, how did we construct runtime and things like that. 
But this year, I will uh, report on two new standard modules that we added and our initial profiler support. I will also briefly touch upon some of the new features that we are designing on for for all and for each loops. So let's dive right in with the uh, with the, the standard modules that we added. So this GPU module is uh, there to support some fundamental GPU operations as well as some uh, introspection and debugging support. The highlight of the module, and I will not go through every single uh, function inside that module, is a certain GPU. So this is this is a function that you can call inside your inside your GPU eligible loop, and if the loop turns out to be not GPU eligible, it will fail at compilation time. And if it's GPU eligible, it will fail at execution time if you don't run that G, uh, run that loop on a GPU sublocale. So this is a sure way of making making certain that um, you are running your loop on the GPU as you intended. This module also has uh, some additional functions for fundamental GPU operations, as I said, setting the block size, creating shared array, and block synchronization. So we expect to expand this module a little bit uh, more in the near future, but eventually we also expect the features here to be, you know, sort of subsumed in the existing chapel uh, features. So, for example, we have GPU write LN because uh, outputting from GPU kernel is a little bit more uh, challenging. Um, so we just added a new function, but ideally we want write LN to handle that, um, but it's not today. Um, and our new design on for all and for each are still going on. Uh, I I don't have anything to present right now. We have some ideas, but those new features will help uh, with things like block synchronization, for example, that will make life uh, easier and portable for the users. The next module that I will talk about is GPU diagnostics module, which is heavily modeled after COM diagnostics, and I will just describe it in the code. So I have a simple on statement and a for each loop that runs on GPU, let's assume. The first functionality of this module is verbose GPU. So you can call this start and stop verbose GPU functions. And everything in between will, will be monitored for GPU launches. So if there's any GPU launch in between, you will see an output in the terminal. And the other functionality of this uh, uh, module is GPU diagnostics uh, uh, support. So you can start and stop this. And just similarly, everything in between will be monitored. But this time, instead of reporting on console, there will be some atomic counters under the hood that will count number of kernel launches uh, for each locale. So this is another way of uh, understanding uh, GPU transforms in chat. Last but not least, I'll touch upon profiler support. Um, so I'm a huge fan of printf slash write LN based debugging and profiling uh, for better or worse. But things don't work that easily on GPUs because uh, like console output is a mess on a GPU. So you need profilers or the need for profilers are higher. Um, so we had some issues getting a profile right, but now we have we have added a new flag uh, that is in the middle of the slide. That's uh, was kind of a, a mouthful GPU PTXAS enforcer optimizations flag. So if you throw that flag in on top of dash dash fast and dash g, and then you can use Emilia's Insight Compute Profiler. If you are not familiar with what that is, it's just a profiler for the kernel performance. I believe it measures some of the API calls as well, but mainly for kernel execution. So you can use that profiler if you use that flag com uh, combination and the profiler will report on basically chapel lines and it will you can see your chapel code and you can ask questions like how many instructions were executed on this exact chapel line and the profiler will be able to tell you that. Profiler is really nice actually. You can compare, uh, you can like side by side compare chapel code to PTX and SAS. So it was really helpful to see the assembly generated from the chapel code as well. So that was the future uh, subsection of my talk. Next, I'll talk about portability. So again, in 2022, what, what we had was a very monolithic runtime. It was just a wrapper about, uh, around the CUDA driver API. We just wanted to get the prototype running first. And it was a success uh, in its own right, for sure. But in 2023, we now, um, <clears throat> in the last year rather, we modularized our runtime that helped us add the AMD support uh, in the runtime fairly easily. Um, Compiler was a slightly different story, uh, but we also added a new mode with this module runtime that enables using CPUs as if they were GPUs. We call it a CPU as device mode. I believe Clang calls it virtual GP mode. And I will also talk a little bit about Intel support. Let's dive right in. So this is the high level software architecture in Chapel. The blue box is the runtime, blue or green, somewhere in between. <clears throat> 
So that box is the runtime box. And as you can see, there are two layers. One is the higher level, higher level GPU layer that interfaces the application. Uh, rather, it doesn't really directly interface the application, but, but more like internal, modu internal modules that interface the application or the compiler calls. And that GPU layer is uh, the same layer um, for or the same interface for whatever vendor that you're using. Then underneath that, we have, um, if you will, plugins. We don't call them that, but like lower layer in the runtime that is NVIDIA interface and AMD interface. And we added this AMD interface recently <clears throat> in 130, which is the most recent release. It's just for single locale in 131 pre release. In fact, today on main, multi locale AMD is supported as well. It's expected to be in the next release. <clears throat> and our current AMD interface is a wrapper around uh, HIP API. So we are mostly on par with NVIDIA, but some 64-bit math functions aren't supported because they aren't there in the AMD math libraries. We need to invest investigate it a little bit more. And I will talk about AMD performance briefly in the performance section of my talk. Next is the CPU interface that I mentioned. So this is a mode that allows you to use the GPU locale model without actual GPUs. So at this mode, again, the modular runtime has a top layer that functions as usual, and it calls into the CPU interface. It just shunts calls back to existing uh, runtime functionality for memory allocation and you know task management and whatnot. In this mode, we still outline loops for kernels and we generate functions, but we never actually code gen them or we never actually launch any kernel because there is nothing to launch. So we always run the loop that you have written. But what this enables us is <clears throat> you can use this assert on GPU functionality that I mentioned before. So you can write your loop and make sure that it's GPU eligible without actually testing it on our GPU. Or you can similarly use GPU diagnostics module for the same purpose. The next portability improvement uh, that is kind of upcoming is uh, Intel interface. Right off the bat, I will just admit that we have not started implementation for this yet. Uh, one factor there is actual hardware availability. Uh, we are hopeful that our module runtime will help. Uh, we recognize that CUDA and HIP are pretty similar to one another, and one API is different. Uh, personally, on a quick look on a level zero API, nothing scared me too much, knowing our high level uh, GPU layer in the runtime. Like we can, we might need some, uh, you know, uh, uh, we might need to adapt to it essentially, but you know, nothing uh, showed nothing showed itself like a, a showstopper to me. The compiler story is a little bit different. Uh, we rely on LLVM uh, to code gen or target uh, GPUs. Currently, no Intel support there, but we need to learn about uh, additional tooling there a little bit more. And that's the end of my portability uh, part of the talk, and then performance, which is the last part. So we just had some initial studies in, in the last year's chew. Now we have significant faster kernel launch and execution. We have this new memory mode that we call Arayon device. And I will also talk about a little bit about uh, AMD experience. I'm sorry, it's a really loud. And I will talk uh, a little bit about future improvements in this area on the device mode. So uh, let's talk about general performance improvements. Um, the first one I will talk about is, is this eager binary loading. So in our first prototype days, what we were doing is when you're launching a kernel, we were just looking at the binary and trying to find the kernel and then launch the kernel. This was a huge cost per kernel launch. So what we did is we now launch, uh, sorry, we now read the binary um, and load the binary at the application launch time that results in 300 times faster kernel launches. So we can now, like if you have an empty for each loop, let's say, uh, we are now able to launch a kernel in 20 microseconds in that scenario, uh, which is something that we are happy, somewhere that we are happy with uh, at the moment. The next optimization that we did is just shuffling passes in the compiler. It's not as simple as that. We also had to adjust the GPU transformation implementation a little bit. But after that shuffling, what happens is GPU transformation happens later in compilation. And so the loops are more optimized because of the pass that is um, the that is doing loop engineering code motion. So with this, <clears throat> We now have much faster kernel execution across the board. And bottom right, in the bottom right, you can see the progression of stream execution, where the bottom dark blue line is what we showed in the last queue, and the middle blue that is on top is where we are today. We also started looking into applications uh, that uses GPU. We use CHOP um, as a user application, which can solve Anquin's problem, and which use GPUs before through Chapel's interop. 
So we ported that to native support that we are developing. We did some application level optimizations using profilers. And now we are able to do, uh, and those application level uh, optimizations are on both interop and native. So with that apples to apples comparison, we are off by 20% in native code, which is not perfect, but uh, we are really happy with where we are compared to, you know, uh, considering where we are in the GP support implementation in general. So AMD performance is a work in progress. Uh, stream runs fine, especially at scale. Uh, we are pretty close to the reference version. Lower, like smaller vectors is a problem. Probably there is a kernel launch overhead there as well that we need to address somehow. Um, chop performance is a different story. Uh, with smaller data sizes, it's okay. 36% off is, is acceptable, but 2.5x is not with the larger data sizes. So there's something that we need to investigate there, but I don't have anything, um, anything smart to say about it at this point, um, unfortunately. Last but not least, the array on device mode. So I will describe what this mode is about. So imagine you have this code where you have a CPU array and GPU array. Uh, currently, we use unified memory, which is the left column, and CPU array is just host allocations all around, and GPU array is using uh, managed memory for metadata and data. If you were in the previous talks, this is just you know page migration relying on CUDA's implementation. Um, so it was really easy to get going, but it has some performance implications. We added this new array on device mode, where the uh, the core part of it is that the GPU data is uh, is Sort of GPU resident. We allocate it with just CUDA malloc. It will never be page migrated. It will be physically always on the GPU memory. It does significantly help with data movements uh, between CPU and GPU, like uh, four to eight X, depending on the direction that you're looking at. It also significantly helps with GPU array initialization, but uh, admittedly really bad performance when you are allocating CPU array, uh, surprisingly. Uh, we know exactly why this is happening, and in fact, I do have a PR for it, but it has some correctness issues, and I'm afraid it's not going to, it's not going to land before 131, but I'm really hopeful that we will fix that uh, CPU performance issue for 132 and maybe even make this mode the default mode um, going forward. With that, I will recap. Um, we can target NVIDIA and AMD GPUs today on single and multi-locale, as long as GPUs do not initiate communication. Uh, you can even move data around as long as host is moving the data. Uh, the performance has seen significant improvements. There's still uh, much to do there, uh, but we are happy where we are. Uh, we have two new modules that enable uh, better GPU programming, if you will. We want to target Intel GPUs near the top of our list for sure. Uh, performance is, is definitely there for us. And we are also working actively on prototyping new uh, features on for all loops and for each loops that we hope to make, uh, that we hope it will make um, GPU programming more portable and, and more intuitive than it is today. With that, I think that's the last slide I have. And thank you so much for listening. I can answer any questions you might have. Okay, do we have any questions from um, the, the phones? I don't see any questions on the chat. Uh, please, if you if I, you asked one and I'm missing it, let me know or just speak up. Oh, wait, Brad has a hand up. No, that's a clapping. I see a question from Akihiro. He says, I might have missed this, but in the simulated GP mode, the PTX code is emulated on the CPUs or the original chapel for all is executed. That's a good question. There's no PTX code in this mode. Everything is just running like a typical chapel for all or for each loop. We don't even generate PTX. You have a question from Dan too. Uh, let me read it out loud for the recording, which I believe doesn't get the chat. Uh, thanks for the great talk. Chapel has made impressive stories in Iran on a very complex schedule. Okay, uh, I like that part. <laughs> Do you expect <laughs> the forthcoming support for Intel GPU will demand any changes to the design of Chapel's user-facing language level interface for programming the GPU? I sure hope not. Um, as I said uh, on that slide, we haven't really started um, implementation yet. And you know how these things work, right? You start implementation and then you realize there are some issues there. So, you know, it's hard to promise, but I'm I'm really hopeful that it won't come to that. Because if you look at what we have um, in terms of like the language level interface for GPU programming, we didn't really change things much yet. Uh, or we are not planning to actually. Um, like if you're a chapel programmer, the only difference that you have is this GPUs array on the on the locale type, and the rest that we are using are pretty much uh, chapel interface already. So I'm hopeful that 
we can make that work for Intel GPUs as well. And having worked with like NVIDIA and AMD, I anticipate things won't be drastically different. Uh, just another way to answer that question, the FPGA question that Brad has asked is significantly more scary to me than Intel GPUs. I, I wouldn't know how to compile, how to run, like program FPGAs in Chapel. I have no idea, but Intel GPUs should be okay. I think uh, I'm crossing and, my fingers. Uh, and Josh, we're at the end of the hour, but Josh has his hand up. So go ahead and ask Josh. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I just got a second what Dan said about the the pace of the developments. It's been uh, you know actually quite difficult to to follow along and see all the new features and improvements that are coming through. Um, I, I wondered a little bit again about the the performance results you had of uh, unified versus ex explicit um, host device memory management. I uh, is that using any kind of well prefetching or memory advice um, at least for the Nvidia um, GPUs? Yeah, that's a good question. No prefetch for sure. In the past, I tried uh, memory advice, but on simpler stuff like stream, which may not show a lot of benefit from advice, but I didn't see any benefit from advice uh, in our runtime. But these results are without either. I'm certain of that. Okay. Yeah, it makes, makes sense that it wouldn't do much for stream, I think. Yeah, and do you expect them to make a difference when it comes to like uh, CUDA mem copy type operations like we have here? Or do you expect uh, the benefit for be? Uh, yeah, or do think... you expect the benefit for in the kernel execution only? Sorry, I couldn't ask the question. Yeah, I, th I, I think there might be depending on your memory access patterns during during the kernel execution. You might I, I, I would potentially expect to see a difference. Yeah, not not necessarily on the allocation as like your timing timing here. Okay. Yeah, anecdotally, for example, in this area on device mode on my branch that that works much better than main actually. Uh, I see a significant improvement in performance in this mode in shock sort benchmark, which is a radix sort single GPU. Um, and I'd be curious to see if if we can do prefetching or hinting in unified memory and see if it can catch up with array on device mode because it has tons of kernels and tons of data movement between CPU and GPU. So it can be a good candidate for testing that out. Okay, and that's the end of, I think we're out of time for session five. Thank you very much, Engen, for giving the last talk. And also, thank you very, very much for chairing this conference. Thank you, workshop. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the help. Okay.